So the government's trying to make the private well ownership illegal, or they are making it illegal. Doesn't matter. I'm going to explain all this, but there's a lot to unpack here. Before I get into that, I want to explain our system just a little bit. Hopefully, we can deal with this problem when it happens, or if it happens, whatever the case is. So, what we have here is a, a well. We don't have the pressurized tank. It's just a pipe that runs all the way down to uh, 100 feet. And then we have a 110 deep well submersible pump that we run off our generator. It's a propane generator. Uh, dual fuel, it's gas or propane. Or we can run our well off solar panels. About every four to five days, I have to run the well. And I go over here and I fill my IBC tank. The IBC tank is 250 gallons. And we probably don't use any more than 50 gallons in that time period. So I put it in this box. The box is insulated. So I actually, in the wintertime, use a fan and push heat into this box to keep it warm in the wintertime. And also, the well water is about 58 degrees. So between the well water and the heat coming from inside the house, this didn't freeze last year. We use a 12 volt RV pump to pump water from the tank into our house, into our shower is what it is. And then we have a camping on-demand water heater. They're pretty cheap. The first one we had, we used for four years. And we thought we had a problem with it, so we took it out and put a backup one in place of it. That one, the new one, was having problems too. Come to find out it was the water pump, the 12 volt RV water pump. That new old one is still in usable condition. I didn't put it back, we're using a new one. So four years and it's still got lots of life in it. It's just a little camping one, you get it for 150 bucks. A lot of what we do is we recycle water. So Carolyn does her laundry in these tubs here. This is her wash tub, this is her rinse tub. And you cannot change your mind, that's the way it's gonna be. <laughs> I think one of these is 20 gallons, the other one's 30 gallons. I fill these up when I fill the IBC tank up, or when she tells me to. <laughs> During the summer, I try to keep them full as much as possible. But we noticed that we were using a lot of hot water for the toilet. What happens is, when you turn the RV pump on, so we just flip a switch and the water pump kicks on, starts pumping water. The water heater kicks on like it's going to heat the water. When it realizes that it's all the way down, it shuts off. So you're still using that propane for that little bit of period. So we decided that we were going to start recycling some of the water. So when Carolyn does laundry, I'll come out here every night and I'll fill a five gallon bucket up with her laundry water. That I carry back into the bathroom. It's dirty water. It's great water. It's not dirty. I mean, it's used, but it's still usable for the toilet. So we can flush our toilet with that. So we find a lot of ways to minimize the amount of water we have to use. Cutting down on the amount of water I have to pump. Now for me, the cost of water is nothing other than running the generator or running the solar panels. When I run the water pump off solar panels, the well water, when I run the water pump off solar panels, the, the well pump, I have to do it on a very sunny day, like today I could do it. And I have to do it about noon time, when the sun's way up high in the sky. Or I have to run the generator, which uses propane, and it doesn't use a lot. I mean, one 20 pound tank of propane probably lasts me three months, but I don't want to use any more than we have to. So we've learned how to minimize. And Carolyn is always so stingy with water. There was a time in her life when she was getting moved into a piece of property. She bought eight acres and they didn't dig a well yet. They just bought a mobile home. So they bought the eight acres. And then they bought a mobile home and put on it, but they didn't have a well. And they were trying to get a, you know, enough money saved back up to get a well. So they're having to go out in the town and get water. So they were always minimizing the amount of water they were using. So she's, she kind of trained me not to use water. Now the other thing about water is, is when we were nomads, I've told you this before, we traveled the country on our little camper. Water was so hard to find all the time. It really put a damper, making the, the experience enjoyable. You always have water and internet to worry about. So I've learned how to really minimize the amount of water. Although we use more water now than we did when we were in a camper, we could let 40 gallons of water last us two weeks. 
So like I said, we're using about 50 gallons every five days now, plus our laundry water. And she probably does laundry maybe two times a week. Now in the winter time, she can't use these tubs. Obviously they freeze. So in that case, she takes the water from the water heater to the IBC tank, and she does it in a bucket. Now she uses this little plunger to plunge the, the laundry. I've tried to get her to buy a washing machine before. You can buy these little video things. She refuses, just absolutely refuses. Won't buy one. She really enjoys doing this. I don't know if I would enjoy it. I mean, I've done laundry, but I don't know if I would like to do it every day or every third day or whatever she does. Of course, we hang our laundry up. But I think everybody's going to have to start thinking about this. So recently, I've reported several things. One, California wants to run like a pipeline from Mississippi River in Louisiana all the way to California and Nevada to fill those reservoirs, those lakes. Right now, I'm sure everybody's heard, those lakes are running out of water. So California's running out of water, Nevada, Arizona, parts of Utah, I think. They have no solution other than to take it from somebody else. Well, when I heard this, it infuriated me. So I did a lot of research on it. And the more I studied it, the more I realized it's really going to keep hurt people in Louisiana. So they want to take it from the swamplands. Now the swamplands are an ecosystem. What I didn't know until just recently is Louisiana swamplands keep falling off into the ocean. All the while the Mississippi River provides new swampland. So it's a constant cycle of loss and gain of swampland. It's just a constant refresh. Well, if California takes water from the Mississippi, the swampland will disappear. So that ecosystem, the alligators and the cotton mouths and all of the animals that go along with that will be gone. Now you would think, being California, they would recognize that because they're very environmentally friendly, so they say. But I suppose it's only when it affects them. But you know, Louisiana, who cares about them? You know, all, all these Midwestern states, that's flyover country. We'll use that to our benefit because you got all these rich people out there watering their lawns and, and it really aggravates me. I found out that the rich people in California have to water their lawns on different days. One side of the street does it on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays and the other side of the street does it on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays or you get a fine. Well, first of all, I'm thinking, why are you watering the lawn if you're out of water? You know, here we are carrying water in from our wash tub into the bathroom so we can use it for flushing the water. So we can save a few pennies on propane costs. And these guys are watering the lawn, but they don't just do it on the days they're supposed to. They do it five, six, seven days a week and they pay the fines because you know, I guess if you pay a fine, that automatically alleviates the problem of the water shortage. I mean, what else could it be? Well, now it's even getting worse. The California government in J July decided that they were going to require anybody who owned a private well to put a meter on it. So that means you dug the well, you installed the pump, you did all that, uh, what it took to get the water, you pay the electricity to get the water out of the ground, and now you have to pay for the water itself. Now they're gonna use that water to build infrastructure so they can resupply their reservoirs. I guess from the Mississippi. Now, when I first reported on this, a lot of people said, oh no, 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 no. That's the big farmers that they're gonna do that to. So if you have a huge farm and you're watering your crops out there, you have to pay for your own water then. No, that was, rejected in September. Legislators in California did not pass that bill, but they did pass the bill about individual homeowners like me in California had to pay for their own water usage. So California has decided that everybody is going to pay for their problem. What I find so fascinating about this whole story is you move out to a desert and you start running out of water in the 1980s. So you've known about this for what, 30 years? that you've got this problem. Ah, no big deal. It'll resolve itself. Well, now it's at critical levels. Everybody has to pay for their problem. It's really scary now. 
is the Mississippi is under drought conditions. I lived by the Mississippi in a little town called Herculaneum, Missouri when I was a teenager. And we used to camp out there by the river. Uh, Doe Run Lead Smeltery Company was out there. I don't know if it's still out there or not. And I, I worked there the summer after I got out of high school. Well, barges go up and down that all day long carrying goods. I don't know what to carry. I assume it's really important stuff. Well, now the barges can't go up and down the river because the river is so low. But they're starting to see things that they've never seen before. I just watched a video that they uh, found an old ship that sunk down in Louisiana. The water has dropped so low that they've found this old ship or barge or whatever it was. Well, think about this. Louisiana is now under a drought condition with the Mississippi, and goods can't go up and down the river. Does that mean California, if they had that pipeline right now, would stop pumping water from Louisiana to California? And my bet would be no, they would continue to do it. Because now what they're trying to do is they're trying to get the federal government to pass a countrywide law that reduces how much water each individual, each family can use in their own homes. And all the excess water will be transported to California. I don't know how they're gonna do that. Are they gonna do it by trucks or trains or pipelines? What my point is, is it seems like everything's an environmental concern until California needs whatever resources it is. It's gonna be an absolute environmental disaster to run a pipeline from Louisiana to California. And then they're gonna ship water from all across the United States to California. Well, how much fuel is that gonna take? Talking about all this stuff that we're pumping into the environment, and California is gonna do it because they need water. My suggestion, my suggestion to people who live in California, stop using water. Who cares about your lawn? Stop taking six hour showers. Stop taking showers two or three times a day. Why don't you do what we do? You use your wash machine. You put clothes in the wash machine. In the back of the wash machine is a pipe. It goes into a stanchion, usually a PVC stanchion. All that water gets pumped into that stanchion from that pipe. Grab yourself a barrel. Pump the water into a 50 gallon barrel. And then take that water and take it into your bathroom. And then you can dip that into your toilet. But no, we have to have bidets. I mean, I, I can't believe some of the stuff that they just waste water, but then require the rest of the country to come around and take care of them. I'm not suggesting that everybody minimize their lives to the point like we have, but you sure could do a lot. So if you'll click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about canning lids. So I hope I can inspire you to become minimalist so you can conserve water. Thanks for watching.